Welcome back everyone. I'm here in the heartrate.r script and our goal for today is to learn simple linear regression for making predictions, summarizing the trend in a data set, and doing statistical adjustment. We'll need three libraries, tidyverse, ggplot, and mosaic. So let's, that, let's get those loaded in. We'll also need the data set, heartrate.csv. Again, you can use the command line. I'll go over here to import data set from text base and serve to where I've got this stored on my hard drive right here, heartrate.csv. There's two columns here, age and HR max. This data comes uh, from a treadmill test on a whole bunch of people where we asked how old they are. Well, we didn't, but the exercise scientists did ask how old they are. Uh, and then they ran the treadmill test and calculated their maximum heart rate uh, at the point of their maximum exertion. Goal here is to understand the trend. Here's a scatter plot. If we have age on the x-axis and heart rate maximum on the y-axis, well, this is something we can all look forward to as, uh, as we age, our maximum heart rate getting lower and lower and lower. Uh, and it's the kind of thing that you might say fit a linear model to. It seems to be pretty well described by a straight line trend here. And such a straight line is, uh, in fact, the basis of the, the kind of advice that you see on exercise websites or as part of maybe apps that do heart rate monitoring through a smartwatch or a smartphone. Uh, let's fit a linear model here. So the syntax for fitting a linear model in R, that is just a straight line that has HR max as the Y variable and age as the X variable is LM. That stands for linear model in R. And we have to specify two things. One is the formula for that linear model. So what's the Y variable and what's the X variable? And the way to think about this is fit a linear model for HR max as the Y variable by the age as the X variable right here. And then second, you just tell R where to find those two variables and they're in the heart rate data set that we just imported. I'm gonna store the result of this call to the LM or linear model function in an object that I call LM1. You could call it whatever you wanted. Now, nothing gets spat out to the console right here, yet all of the information that's necessary to do anything at all with this linear model is contained in that object that we've defined right there on line 12. So first things first, we could just summarize the model itself. Look at the coefficients. Here's our intercept, and here is the coefficient on age. We see the intercept is about 208, and the slope on the age variable is about minus 0.7. So if you've ever seen some exercise guidance that say, okay, take your age, multiply it by 0.7, subtract the result from 208, well, that's exactly where those numbers came from. That's the intercept and the slope of a straight line fit to data from exercise science. We can also calculate R squared for this model using the R squared function. That's defined in the Mosaic library. And it turns out to be about 51 or 52% right here. Now, you can also find R squared for this model at the bottom of what's called the regression table, which you get by a call to the summary function, passing this fitted object here from line 12 into summary. And you can see down here, here's multiple R squared. It's the same number that we calculated just a few lines above, right here, about 51, 52%. There's also a lot of other information. In fact, this regression table can be quite overwhelming the first time you see it. And one of the big goals of the semester is to be able to interpret every last bit of this table, but we're not quite there yet. We're just focusing on R squared. All right, let's do something else with this model. Remember, we've learned that there's many, many things we can do with a fitted regression model. Only one of them is to summarize the trend to say, oh, hey, it looks like with every additional year of age, maximum heart rate goes down by about 0.7 beats per minute each additional year. That's summarizing the trend. We can also make a prediction. So to make a prediction, we need some people to make a prediction about. So let's read in a new data set. I've called this data set heartratetest.csv. Let's come up here and import that from text base. It's up here in my data folder, and there it is, heartratetest.csv. Now, this data frame only has one column, age, because in order to make a prediction, we have to know the x variable, but we usually don't know the y variable when we're making predictions. So we know how old these people are, but we haven't gone to the trouble of putting them through a treadmill test to figure out what their maximum heart rate is. We just wanna predict what their maximum heart rate would be using the model fitted to other people. So let's import this data set. Uh, we've got 10 people, a ages ranging looks like from 26 on the young end to 70 on the old end. Let's come back to our script over here. So when we feed in the, we don't need this, uh, this line right here if you used import data set, that's the command line version. We can feed the fitted object right here, that's our model, LM1, that we fit all the way back up here on line 12. That's the first argument to the predict function. The second argument is new data. Where do we actually wanna make our predictions? 
So this new data, this second argument to predict, expects a data frame whose column names match the x variable, or more generally x variables, in the original data set that we used to fit this model in the first place. So heart rate test has a column called age. That was the x variable in our model up here, so we're good to go. Let's make these predictions. There they are. This tells us that the first person in our, uh, our data set would have a predicted maximum heart rate of 160.46. That corresponds to a 69-year-old. The eighth, per, uh, the, let's say the ninth person here would have a predicted maximum heart rate of about 177. That corresponds to a 45-year-old. What I'm doing here on lines 34 and 35 is actually organizing this information in an easier uh, to work with kind of way. In fact, I'm going to take heart rate test and augment it with a, a new column here, which is HR max pred. That's the predictions for my model right there. So that's just that highlighted bit right there is exactly what we've done up here on line 31, just putting out those numbers to the console. Instead, I'm going to save them as part of the heart rate test data frame that I imported. And so now, Here's 10 people where we know their age. We don't know their actual maximum heart rate. We just have their predicted maximum heart rate from our fitted model using the information about other people to generalize to this data set right here. All right. Finally, let's do statistical adjustment. And remember, what statistical adjustment entails is looking at the residuals from the model. Those model residuals represent the difference between your actual maximum heart rate and what would be predicted or expected on the basis of your age. Okay, so in a word, maximum heart rate adjusted for age. I guess that's not a word, that's a phrase, but it's, it's a little bit more concise. Now, we can get both the fitted or predicted values for the model and the residuals of the model using the fitted and resid functions. So these are all of the fitted values, in other words, where they would fall along the line for each of the, I don't know, 100 and some odd, 151 people in this data set. And here are the residuals, the difference between their actual maximum heart rate and their predicted maximum heart rate for the original data set. I personally find it a little bit more helpful to take this information and put it beside the actual data point. So I'm gonna define a new data frame here called heart rate aug. This is my original data set here, piped to the mutate function. And I'm gonna define two new variables, hrmaxpred, which are the fitted values, and hrmaxresid, which are the residuals, or again, the, the model errors, or the difference between predicted and actual. So this heart rate aug data frame now has one line per person, two additional columns compared to my original data set. I've got actual age and heart rate maximum, and then predicted and residual heart rate maximum. So for example, here's a 31-year-old whose actual maximum heart rate was 177. Their predicted maximum heart rate was 186 and change. So that's their age-adjusted maximum heart rate of like minus 9.6, the difference between those two numbers right there. And you could even arrange by the residual. So for example, if you wanted to ask, who are the people with the 10 lowest uh, age-adjusted maximum heart rates? Here they are. We've uh, arranged HR max resid in ascending order from bottom to top. Or if you wanted to ask, who are the people with the highest age-adjusted maximum heart rates? Here they are, from top to bottom. It looks like the person with the highest age-adjusted maximum heart rate in this data set is a 25-year-old whose actual max was 212, versus a predicted max of 190 and change for a residual of 21.2. Here's a 72-year-old with a 171 heart rate. Expected would be 158. That's a residual of about 12.6. Okay, so we've covered the basics of linear models here. How to fit them in R. That was back here in one simple line on line 12. How to extract the coefficients that let us summarize the trend between the y and the x variable in the data set, like the slope. How to calculate r squared from either this function or the bottom of the regression table from summary. How to make a prediction on a new data set where we know the x variable, but not necessarily the y variable. And then finally, how to do statistical adjustment. Look at, say, the top 10 and, and bottom 10 by age-adjusted maximum heart rate by taking the residuals from the model and comparing them uh, with the, uh, the original data points. So happy coding, and we'll see you next time.